So in 1992, seeing this crisis coming, I wrote this book called, If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School. Uh, my dad didn't like this book either for some reason. I can't understand that. So that's why I say sometimes I'm called a heretic and a lunatic, but I'm not unpatriotic. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't change our school system, we're down anyway. You know, I always, when I was seven years old, when I came upon this, is I was seven years old growing up in a little town called Hilo, Hawaii, and I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning to find my mother crying, and she was on the dinner uh, kitchen table crying. So I'm, I'm the oldest boy, and I come out, this oldest son, oldest child, I said, Mom, why are you crying? And she just she couldn't, she, she couldn't talk to me. And what she showed me back then in the old dark age, this is 1954, our bank statements came on a, a paper called Goldenrod. And Goldenrod, you know, was this kind of this orange yellow paper. And I still remember, I'm, I couldn't read numbers that well, but I could see the colors. So one month, the Goldenrod was, the, the numbers were in black and then red. I said, what does red mean? She means I don't have enough money to pay the bills. I'm writing bad checks. I went, holy mackerel. So the next month, the black line is a little shorter, and the red line is going up. And I said, Mom, are you writing bad, more bad checks? She says, yes, I have to. And then the third month, the black line was a little shorter, and the red line was up. I'm not very good at math. But when you see the red going up and the black getting shorter, you better do something. So I said to my mom, I said, what is dad doing about this? She says, he's doing the best he can. He's at school. He's getting his PhD. And I went, holy mackerel. So ladies and gentlemen, our country today, the red is going higher and higher and higher. And the black is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And that's one of the biggest problems we have. So then, that was when I was seven, when I was nine, I'm sitting in my fourth grade class, and I raised my hand and I asked the teacher, I said, when in the world are we ever gonna learn about money? And she says, we don't learn it, we don't teach you about money at school. Ladies and gentlemen, why in the world do we not teach kids about money? And that was when my education began, so that's when I started doing my research. And I found out it's not an accident. It is not an accident. There's no financial education in schools. The government controls what is put through the curriculum. That's why so many people are taking their kids out of school, because basically, it's like my poor dad. My poor dad was a great man. Six foot four, tall for Japanese. PhD, honest, hard working. But he had no financial education. He had no idea what it meant. All he knew was that he should get a paycheck, work for the government, and collect pension. And that's what's killing this country, that attitude. It's kind of an entitlement mentality. So then the last book I want to show you here, this is my friend Donald Trump and I wrote this book together because we decided to become, you know, speak out as educators endorsing entrepreneurship and financial education. So when Tim Rawlson invited me to come and speak, I said, I'd speak to this group because uh, I did a talk once to Columbia University, the same talk, I got thrown out. You know, I said, why don't you teach us about money? So we do, we teach you to get a job. And I said, you don't understand something. Today in America, corporate America is hiring people outside this country. We have too many employees being pumped up by our school system, go to school, get a job. So I'll give you a little quick test here and then I'll get off, okay? Who pays the highest taxes in this country? People who have jobs. If you go to school and you have a job, you will pay the highest taxes. That includes doctors and lawyers. They can't even tell that. Who pays the, who pays the next highest taxes? People who save money. And so, you know, Susie Orman's a friend of mine as well as, uh, what's the other guy? The guy's name, but anyway. They keep saying, save, 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 save. If we had financial education, we would know we shouldn't save our money. Why would you save your money when the effective interest rate today is a minus 3.2%? That means you put $100,000 in the bank, next year your money is worth 97000 It doesn't make any sense. So the, so the 
Wage earners in this country pay the highest taxes. Guys like me pay very little, legally. I, wouldn't, I don't want to go to jail and become somebody, somebody's boyfriend, you know what I mean? I pay my taxes. So the wage earners pay the highest taxes, the savers pay the highest taxes, and the next people that pay the highest taxes are those with 401ks. And we wonder why we have this gap between the rich and everybody else, and it starts in our school system. So the last thing I'll leave you with is this. Why are we telling people to go back to school and get a job when the unemployment rate among college graduates is going up and uh, they call that uh, student loan debt is now higher than credit card debt? Why are we doing that? And why are we telling people to save money when they're printing money? And why are they telling people to put money in a 401k when the stock market is an all-time high? I think the Dow is, is past 17,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we're cruising for bruising out there. It is my generation, the old guys, the baby boomers, who are going to get crushed. And then the millennials will have a harder and harder time. So that's why, and then the last thing is this, Social Security in 2010, Social, Social Security went negative. That means it's now underwater. So that's why I speak out, and for 10 years I've spoken, I'm sorry, I'm thinking time. But anyway, that's what I speak about, and thank you all for being here.